John Collins has been building his own planes for over 40 years. But his don't have roaring engines or spinning propellers. They combine science with origami, an ancient Japanese art form that he applies to black belt standard. And turn it into a flying machine. John's designs flip over, flap their wings, and regularly make their way into the aerobatics winner's circle. We are all over that one. Get up there, get up there, get up there, get up there, get up there! I love telling people that I throw paper airplanes for a living. <laughs> it makes me giggle every time I say it. <laughs> Where did your fascination for flying things start? It really started when I was very young. Just the idea of something taking to the air. It's, just, it's invisible. There's a whole variety of insects that use different ways to fly. The birds fly in different ways. Uh, then you've got bats and the helicopters, airplanes. The whole thing was just amazing. Paper in John's hands is transformed into something extraordinary. Secret paper airplane stash here. So they all have their own little resting place in the case. John's tumbler is Whoa. anything but ordinary. Huh. It uses natural occurring updraft to sustain flight. What looks like magic, John puts down to simple science. It's just physics in motion here. It's just falling really, really slowly. You decide. So I call this one walking my plane. I'm walking my plane. This plane also spins as it flies. Does that fly? You bet it does. Go. Wow. The faster the tube spins, the more it interacts with the surrounding air and develops lift. The boomerang is capable of circling, looping, right, the sky's the limit. That's what it should look like when you're doing it. Right. Fasten your seat belts. I'm about to throw. And think of throwing it out like eight, nine feet. It's not really hard to throw. I'm hoping right. this will actually come back. There it is. That's good. That was way more on track. <laughs> That was meant to hit you. What you just did is the cardinal sin of paper airplane flying. No, yeah, you picked it up by the tail feathers. Oh. So this is where all the subtle adjustments happen. Picking it up by the back of the plane almost guarantees that it won't fly well in the next flight. Okay. So let's try this one more time. All right. Gentle toss, straight out. If at first you don't succeed. Wow, if that's your gentle toss, I don't want to see your hard throw. That was <laughs> this is harder than speed. you think. Yeah, yeah. Paper planes have long been used as structural samples for actual aircraft. Leonardo da Vinci is said to have used them to test out his designs. A paper plane in flight experiences four aerodynamic forces. Aerodynamic lift helps it up, gravity pulls it down, thrust keeps it moving forward, and air drag slows that forward movement down. These four forces interact. John's paper airplane designs use these basic principles in the most remarkable ways. And so what other similarities do your paper airplane designs have with these aircraft here in this museum? So you can see the transition from the, the biplane idea where there's all of this structure to keep the wings together and that really creates all of this drag. And so this is one of the things that you're always fighting as an aircraft designer. Cutting down on drag, that carries through from full-size aircraft all the way down to paper airplanes. You want this thing to be really super smooth. John's giving me a paper folding masterclass. Okay, so we're just gonna walk through the uh, world record plan, right? So okay. Basic folding here. So you wanna start with the shorts. He also gives me three tips on how to fold the perfect aerodynamic plane. Is there any secret to this or I just... <laughs> yeah, don't, don't screw it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, be hard. sharp creases are a really big key. So this is, now we've got the plane folded. Right now, both planes will do exactly the same thing. They'll nose over and crash, just like that. Roll, it rolled over and crashed, right? This is exactly the moment where kids look at me and go, see? Yes. <laughs> so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, pick it up by this locking fold with one hand. And with the other hand, we're just gonna put a finger on one side and a thumb on the other. And we're gonna lift and keep lifting until the, the tops of the wings touch and then we're gonna let go. And now you've got what's called positive dihedral angle. The wings are raking upwards as they leave the body of the plane. So the other thing we're gonna do is a little more subtle. So what we do is put a little bit of upward bend right here. Now when the plane picks up enough speed, enough air is bouncing off of those little bends to push the tail down, rotating around the center of gravity. That lifts the nose up and now you're really flying. And that's how every plane from this size on up to this size flies. This is like the best kept secret in the world. <laughs> yeah, these two little things, just a little bit of positive dihedral, a little bit of up elevator, and you're good to go. Woo! Way better. <laughs> <laughs> 
John's paper airplanes are the product of over 150 years of aerodynamic innovation. And this is how Delta Airlines started. Designed 100 years ago by the Haftelan Dusters Crop Dusting Company, which later became Delta, this was the world's first plane type specifically for crop dusting. Agricultural aviation began in the early 1920s. As planes transitioned from wooden biplanes to sleek airliners, aerodynamic theory advanced. This Delta DC-3 was one of the first two-engine airliners to carry passengers across the globe. The only Delta passenger DC-3 in existence, it combines vintage style with modern avionics. And then Howard Hughes, I think, was the first guy to polish even the rivet heads down, so the whole thing was just pristine. Then John explains, in business class, how a passion turned into a career. Maintaining a lifelong passion like that, I mean, that's not a straightforward path. How do you keep yourself motivated? Even though it would look like it's the same thing day to day, it's actually a little bit different. I'm, I'm always inventing new planes. I'm always investigating how the planes do what they do. I don't view it as stagnant at all. A, a lot of people would look at that and go, Geez, how do you, you know, paper airplanes? I'm done. <laughs> Five minutes from now, I'll make one, I'm done. But for me, it hasn't been that. It's just been this, this learning journey and this invention journey. And now it's, it's a full-time teaching journey. And so pushing air aside to slip through it actually takes more work than you might imagine. And that work to push the air molecules... John Collins teaches in a unique way. 127 kilos, that's actually closer than any of the other guesses. This isn't just machine learning, it's aerodynamics made cool. It's a dart. The students were soon falling along to John's distance world record-breaking design. Science is important, science matters, and you can do science yourself with something as simple as a sheet of paper.